Hey everybody, and welcome to the Business Growth and Entrepreneur Podcast. I am Bill, the company's expert. And today we got a bit of a weird topic. This is how to get your first 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Now, this is a topic I was asked to do, and uh, it's um, interesting. I have to explain for a second. If you look at the number of subscribers that this channel has, which is my secondary channel, there's only like 3,000 subscribers, but over on my main channel, I'm coming up to 300,000 subscribers. So uh, that's what sort of I feel gives me the permission to do this topic. Um, there's uh, something like the last time I checked, it was something like in the area of 220,000 YouTube channels have reached the 100,000 subscriber mark. Um, my understanding is that there's about 220,000 that have reached 100K and 22,000 that have reached a million. So that's how this fits into the grand scheme of things. So it's actually not a super rare thing like it once was. Um, so we're going to get into that today. There's a million videos out there that uh, describe how to get your first thousand subscribers on YouTube. Um, but not a lot that talk about 10,000 or 100,000. So that's what I wanted to do today. Um, <clears throat> now, let's see here. The way this is kind of structured was uh, I was asked in some other kind of event uh, to write down the main principles that uh, allowed me to grow my YouTube channel to what it is today, which is 300,000 subscribers. And that is the, the company's expert. So that's the name of the channel that I'm talking to. This is the company's expert two, that uh, is the home of the, uh, my podcasts, including this one, the business growth and entrepreneur podcast. And, um, so we're going to, we're going to talk about that list today. Excuse me. I had something in my throat there for a second. Um, we're going to talk about that today, and I've made a list of seven principles that basically allowed me to grow a channel from zero to 300,000. So let's get into it. Um, <clears throat> now, why am I doing that on this podcast? Well, because YouTube can be a form of uh, entrepreneurial venture. It's just as simple as that. There's many people, especially in the last couple of years because of recent world events that have turned YouTube into their source of income. And uh, so increasingly, that's what we're seeing happen. And um, that also kind of coincides with YouTube's shift to embrace business and ads and that kind of stuff uh, more closely than it had done in the past. So, you know, that's another change that's happened. And, um, you know, this is kind of how things have gone. So this is becoming an increasingly relevant topic. So let's get into it. So these were the uh, principles I'd written down. Um, number one, okay, time is going to pass whether you are doing YouTube or not. You might as well have something to show for it. Okay, so that's kind of the first principle here. Um, you know, and this principle applies to any endeavor in life. Okay, if you uh, find yourself wishing that you had done a certain thing in the past, okay, because if you had done it by now, it would have blossomed into something pretty amazing, okay, um, you could apply this principle, okay, time is going to pass whether you're doing it or not, so you might as well, you know, do it, you might as well try, okay, now I know this seems extremely general, and on the surface, it doesn't seem very helpful, but uh, this is the very beginning, the starting point of great things, okay? You might as well go for it. If it's something that you know you want to do deep down, you know that there's a part of you that, you know, would have liked to do it and could possibly have a talent for it, you know, time is going to pass, you know, so even if you kind of have it on the back burner, okay? It's something that you're doing, but it's not your main focus, okay? Um, or it's something that will require a lot of time uh, invested in it, then it's something that, you know, you should consider actually pulling the trigger on and starting to get the ball rolling, in my opinion. This is the principle that uh, I was following when I did my YouTube channel, because usually the way it works, and I will testify to this on YouTube, um, that you don't get instant success. At least uh, that's the impression I've gotten by doing YouTube pretty much full time for 
three and a half years or whatever it's been. Um, you know, even if you come up with an amazing video or something that uh, is going to go viral or whatever, um, that doesn't happen instantly. That happens after it's been out for a long time. In my case, that happened with some of my videos that were out for over a year before they took off. So the point is, and this is no secret, you have to work at YouTube. YouTube requires time. If you go into it expecting instant success and you are not some kind of YouTube expert, um, you're probably not going to get instant success. It's probably going to take something that blossoms and rolls into something great over time. Okay. Um, so that's the first thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So that's the first principle. The second principle that I had written down, um, when asked about this was now, this is something that I'm, I'm not borrowing. I'm stealing from a channel and, uh, I'll name drop their name. It's Think Media. Okay. Uh, they say a lot of different things. Some of them are really good. Some of them, you know, have not really resonated with me. But one thing that they've said that really does resonate with me is punch perfection in the face and just make videos. That means, you know, if you are a perfectionist and you use the excuse that, oh, it won't be as good as I could possibly get it. And that's your reasoning why you don't do it. Um, this is the cure for that. It's basically saying, I think, I think this is their official slogan. Just press record. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I will testify to this. You know, um, you really need this principle firmly lodged in your mind to get you to make videos. Okay. Because in the beginning, your videos are going to suck. And this is the same uh, with any business venture. Okay. When you start out in marketing and you're trying to sell something in the beginning, you're going to be pretty lame at it. Okay. If you are an engineer or you are, um, <clears throat> a technician and you're trying to create a product, um, you know, just like a homespun kind of thing, you're working in your garage, you're trying to create something that you can sell in the beginning, it's going to suck. Okay. You tend to refine your skills over time. Uh, practice makes perfect, you know? So, the problem is that if you have a mental block about not doing something unless you can do it really well, the problem with that is that uh, <laughs> you will never get started, right? So I wholeheartedly endorse their principle from Think Media, uh, which is punch perfection in the face, just make videos, just hit record, okay? Uh, that's something that, uh, I will back up hundred percent. You need to have that attitude. Okay. You can't be afraid, uh, you know, that what you're going to do is not very good and therefore you shouldn't do it. Now, something that helped me was that I personally compartmentalize my YouTube efforts from everything else in my life, apart from my family. Um, but my professional endeavors, I was doing contract work. I was working as a managing consultant. I still am. And, um, I was doing teaching. I was doing a, a bunch of different things. I was mentoring startup founders and, you know, just various activities. And I basically, compartmentalized YouTube. So the fact that I was on YouTube doing videos was something I didn't advertise in any of those circles. I didn't mention it. I didn't promote it to these people. I kept it in isolation. I figured that if I'm going to build some kind of audience, uh, you know, if you want to call it that some kind of a viewership of my YouTube videos, it would be something completely separate from all my other work lives and other things I was doing. Okay. Um, and that allowed me to be able to kind of do whatever I wanted on YouTube. And it just, it wouldn't have affected any of the other things I was doing. Now, since then, the irony is that I've since dropped nearly all of those other traditional endeavors. Um, you know, I'm, I'm purely a management consultant right now uh, as the last remaining thing I do other than YouTube. And uh, that's been through, through choice. Uh, I'm not really teaching at the moment and because YouTube is consuming most of my time and I like it that way. Um, it's very creatively satisfying to have your own YouTube channel that, you know, that, that kind of, uh, pays the bills. So, so that's what I'm doing. But in the beginning, 
the only reason I could make it work when I was sort of in that uh, starting phase was by not connecting these worlds. I didn't even um, connect my family life with my YouTube life. So what that means is that when, it, when I did a video, I wouldn't even promote it to my family or circle of friends. It was just a completely separate thing. And uh, like, obviously, people in my house knew that I was shooting videos. They didn't have any part in me shooting videos. They weren't there in the room and I didn't share everything I did with them. I sometimes kind of uh, asked for people's opinions on stuff, but I didn't um, actively involve them. It was just sort of my thing. And that enabled me to get over your sort of uh, inhibitions and be able to create videos and, uh, and start to refine them. So uh, that's, that's how I did it personally. Um, now, listen, everybody is going to have their own uh, solution that's going to work for them in their life. Okay, uh, you can't necessarily transplant what I do or what anyone else does, but just I'm just sharing what uh, was my specific thing that I did, if that's of any help to people. Okay, so that's that's the second sort of principle. Punch perfection in the face, just make videos, just hit record. Okay, number three was one video per week, and then when you can sustain that, go to two videos per week. Okay, so that's, that's sort of the rate. And um, this is a principle, actually, that I still haven't uh, finalized. Because what I'm doing now is I'm doing sort of two videos a week on my main channel. I'm doing one video a week on my secondary channel. And I'm doing one members-only video a week, which is purely for the members, the channel members from my main YouTube channel. So that technically comes to four videos a week. And truth be told, um, what I found is that doing these podcasts, uh, or what I'm calling a podcast, which is basically an audio-only uh, YouTube video is really helping with that. Um, you know, it allows you to put a video out and provide value, but you don't have to worry too much about, you know, the video aspect of it, which I found was, you know, taking a large, um, an inordinate, lar inordinately large amount of effort to get the video aspect right with lighting and you know, lenses and focusing and, and, you know, the, the background and, you know, your, your frame, your field of view and like, like all this kind of stuff. It, um, was taking a lot of effort when you're doing like when you're sort of a one man show. Um, and it took the focus away from, uh, what I feel is the value, which is what I'm saying. So that was the advantage of doing the audio episodes because I found they're a lot more convenient to do. Um, <clears throat> but one video a week uh, is kind of what I found for me that uh, YouTube basically needs because if you don't put out one video a week, more or less, they uh, YouTube seems to promote your channel less. Okay, it seems to require a certain amount of momentum for the YouTube algorithm to sort of it's almost like it takes you seriously if you do one video a week consistently. Uh, it seems to decide that, okay, then you're serious, you're, uh, you're committed. And so you're worthy of being promoted. Okay. Uh, this is not a highly original, uh, revelation I'm giving here. A lot of, there's a million videos that'll tell you that the first thing you need to do on YouTube is have consistency in putting out videos same day every week. And that's what I found for me seemed to, um, work. And I did a lot of experimenting to verify that. Okay. <clears throat> now, number four, the fourth principle. Okay. Um, in the beginning, before you have any kind of audience on YouTube, something that, um, it solves the sort of chicken and the egg problem. It's like, how do you get an audience on YouTube? Uh, if YouTube is not promoting your videos. And then the problem then is, well, YouTube won't promote my videos unless I have an audience. So it's a chicken and the egg kind of catch 22. Now, this is um, a problem for a lot of new YouTubers 
you know, they don't understand how to break this. I'm putting out videos, but they're getting like one or two views and nobody seems to come back, uh, you know, and because they're not getting views, YouTube is not promoting me. So how do I break this? Well, what I found was in the beginning, promoting your videos on social media every single day uh, is something that really helps. Okay. So if you go on social media, you go to, you know, groups and you go to places on the internet where the people who might like your content are concentrated and you promote your videos some way to them. Okay. Send them to your YouTube video. Um, that can initially in the very beginning, get a few people to go to watch your YouTube videos. So it begins to trigger the YouTube algorithm where you're getting some views. So YouTube decides, okay, you're getting some views. So I'll start promoting you little by little. Right. And then if your videos are uh, engaging, you know, and it starts promoting your videos and people start watching them, then that cycle continues. The more people that watch it, the more YouTube promotes it, and it becomes a sort of positive feedback loop and it grows and grows. Okay. So, so the fourth principle here was in the beginning to get the ball rolling, promote your videos on social media. Okay. Every single day. Now, this is not something totally original to me. I actually took this, um, this was uh, where I first heard this uh, regarding YouTube was, I believe, from a YouTuber called Sonny Leonarduzzi, if I'm saying that name correctly. Uh, I can't remember. It's been a while since I saw any of her videos, but she has a channel on like how to make it on YouTube or something. And I watched a few of her videos in the beginning. And she, once again, you know, like most people, she says some things that resonated with me and some things that kind of didn't. But uh, that was one that that did resonate with me and it did seem to be valid as far as I was concerned. And that's what helped me in the beginning. Um, so that's principle number four. Okay. In the beginning, promote your videos on social media every single day. Now, number five, the fifth principle here was, and this is very important. This is a fundamental truth of marketing. Okay. Because if you want to sell something or you want to get something, um, to be popular, then marketing principles apply. They are the rules of the game. So the fifth principle is, it doesn't matter what I want to talk about. What matters is what other people want to hear. Okay, that's a fundamental rule of marketing. Give the people what they want. Now, the problem is, is that this principle, when people hear it, they say, oh, you know, of course, that's obvious. It's self-evident. But in reality, everybody thinks the opposite of this, okay? If you're listening to this and you're thinking, you know, maybe I should start a YouTube channel or maybe I should focus on YouTube, um, chances are is that in the back of your mind, you're thinking, well, you know, the thing is, I want to do what I want to do. I have an idea of what I'd like to do. And so that's what gets me excited about doing YouTube. So I want to do that. And you proceed on that basis. You know, you have a firm idea what you want to do, and that's what you're going to do, damn it. Regardless of whether other people want to consume that content. Okay, that's the problem. So here's the deal. You need to embrace this principle, okay? Now, what I, what, I mean, this is not particular to me. What I found and what most people find is that usually there is a sweet spot out there where you can satisfy both yourself and your audience, okay? So let's say you want to, I don't know, I'm going to make up an example off the top of my head. Let's say you're going to, you're going to do a YouTube video or a YouTube channel about, um, uh, sports cars. Okay. You're, you're a sports car enthusiast. Okay. And you want to do videos about sports cars and the audience that you're hoping to attract are people that are really into sports cars. Okay. Now there might be some aspects of sports cars that you're into. Okay. Let's, let's say you could find 10 subtopics about sports cars that you would love to create content about, okay? Like for example, you know, specific models of sports cars 
their history. Or you could do, you know, videos on the various uh, automobile manufacturers that build sports cars. Or you could talk about, you know, reviews of, um, uh, you know, I don't know, different parts or different modifications. Or uh, you could talk about the legal regulatory aspect of sports cars. Or you could talk about, you know, what the future holds with hybrid automotive technology and sports cars. I mean, you know, you could you could keep going like all these different subtopics, but you know, you're just into sports cars. And so you would love to do any of those but after some experimentation you find that you know people only seem to really come back for two of those subtopics they only come back for the history of the automotive companies and they come back for what the future holds you know with hybrid technology for sports cars. Th those are the ones that seem to get all the views. Those are the ones that people seem to be interested in. It's the ones that they comment on. Um, so, so here's the deal. If you focus on those two areas, let's say, that would satisfy you because you're still talking about sports cars, but it would also satisfy your audience because those are the things that they particularly want to hear about. Okay? So you have to embrace this principle. So principle number five is it doesn't matter what you want to talk about. What matters is what other people want to hear, what your audience wants to hear. And you cater to that. If you give the people what they want, they will come back. They will come back for more. Okay. Right. Principle number six. And that is ad words uh, are important to learn what phrases people are searching for. Now, um, this is a kind of a weird one. I have to sort of explain. Um, I'm usually not a fan of technical gimmicks. Okay. Hacks. Like, let's say you make an awesome video. The video is entertaining. The video is informative and people enjoy watching it. Okay. Um, now if you, if you name it something, it gets say a certain amount of views. But if you tweak the name by adding another word, then or or substituting a different word, uh, then it gets five times the views because people are searching for that particular word. Okay, in in YouTube, YouTube is uh, search is very important for YouTube. Usually, people search for the topics that they're interested in, and if they're all searching for a particular word, and your video contains that word in the title. Um, maybe your video comes up first or it comes up, you know, when people search for it, if you were to use another word, maybe that wouldn't happen. Right. So for example, let's say, um, you know, like, okay, let's take this video. For example, I mean, I could call this video, how to get your first a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube. Okay. I think that's what I'm probably going to call it. Uh, or I could call it, you know, how to get a hundred thousand subscribers. Okay, so it's not your first 100,000, it's how to get 100,000 subscribers. Okay, uh, I could use the word on YouTube or I could not have that. I mean, you know, there's so many variations or permutations of that, right? So this is what I'm talking about. If you've created an amazing video, uh, you're going to do it a disservice by titling it something or not using a certain term that everybody interested in the, to in the topic is searching for and is looking up okay uh so for that purpose it's good to have done your research in advance and done a bunch of searches and see you know uh, using various tools the tools seem to change every six months there's always a better tool to do this but um a way to look up you know what are the terms that people are using what are what what exactly are they typing into the search box because if your video closely matches that it will tend to come up before other videos so um you have to be tuned into this now this in no way is a substitute for making crappy videos <laughs> you know what i'm saying uh what matters most is that the video is good but beyond that you need to sort of just make sure that you're tuned into what the lingo is that people are using and what the terms are that people care about the most and what they're physically typing in when they look for stuff. Okay, so that's principle number six, add words to learn what phrases people are searching for. Okay, and then finally, we come 
to the last and most important principle here, okay? And that is quality, okay? Uh, the number one thing that will give you any success on YouTube is having quality videos, okay? Uh, quality is number one. If you make something really good that people like, it will get exposure and people will watch it and they will like it and they will come back okay no amount of hacks and gimmicks can substitute for that okay because the thing is even if you somehow fool people into watching a video the video is not very good but you give it a really amazing incredible title you give it a really amazing super interesting thumbnail that everybody who sees it goes what and they and they want to click on it okay you so you you sort of bait them into watching something if the video sucks they're not going to watch it they're going to turn it off and then they're never going to come back okay if the video is good they're going to watch it they're going to like it they're going to comment on it and they're going to subscribe to you and then they're going to come back and watch every single video you do and some even more than once if they're really good okay so quality is the number one principle okay now Let's get into this. What does that mean? Okay, when I say quality, what the hell am I talking about? What do you actually do? Here's the deal, okay? Um, quality, there's many ways of measuring quality, and I'm going to give you the business explanation, and this is, the, uh, this is what I feel is really the secret for how I grew my channel um, to 300,000 subscribers at, at present, uh, my main channel, and that is by... Um, here, well, let's start at the beginning. It's by giving, giving the people what they want. Now, instead of people, let's use the word customer, okay? Um, the technical term in business is customer relative perceived quality, okay? So what that means is that, picture this. If you were to ask your potential audience members, okay, you're going to give them a poll, where they had to write down in order, okay, from best to worst, the uh, channels that covered, say, sports cars, okay? Um, which is the best channel? That's number one. Which is the worst channel? Make that, say, number 10, okay? Now, make a list in, in order, okay? So the best channel is number one. Se the second best is number two, okay? Now, obviously, the word best is subjective. It's going to be different for each person, okay? If someone is looking for quality, they find quality. If somebody is looking for, um, you know, sort of action-packed videos, they get action-packed videos. If somebody is looking for, uh, you know, really in-depth industry knowledge, you know, that's what they're looking for. That's what they're going to define as best, okay? So best is subjective, okay? But what you're basically doing is you're saying from the customer perspective, from what your audience considers important, okay, where do you rank, okay? Are you, the, are you at the top? Are you giving them what they consider to be the best, you know, quality, the best content? Or is it like the worst content? Are you far down the list? Okay. Um, now, the 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 scale of like how good you're doing, it is relative. It is relative to your competition. Okay. It is not absolute. You might be doing great. You know, like okay videos on sports cars. Okay. Let's pretend there are no other dedicated YouTube channels that talk about sports cars, in which case you would be the best because there's not really any competition, right? You would rank number one. But as an alternative, let's pretend that there's 50 other YouTube channels that all cover sports cars, right? And, you know, yours are okay, but other ones are amazing. Okay. So in which case you would, you wouldn't rank number one, you'd be far down the list. Okay, so what I mean when I talk about quality is I'm talking about customer relative perceived quality, and that's you ranking number one in a list that your customers sort of fill out of they're ranking the channels that cover sports cars or whatever you're doing from best to worst. You have to try to be number one or you have to try to be as close to the top as possible. Okay, this is a business principle. Uh, they have found that in business, okay, the companies that tend to be successful 
are the ones that score high on this metric. And if you score low on this metric, you tend to not do well. Okay, you tend to not do well financially. The ones that do best financially tend to uh, ace this metric, okay? And what I found on YouTube is that this, this YouTube is a reflection of that, okay? Um, a lot of my uh, videos are kind of like this. There, there's not too much effort put into them, but I have a handful of videos that uh, I put a lot of effort into them and I tried to make them as good as I could possibly make them. I looked at my competitors in a way. I looked at the other channels that were kind of doing the same thing as me almost. And uh, I thought like, okay, how can I make something like a lot better than this? You know, that, I, that's, that's tough, but how can I do it? And I took my best shot at it. And some videos I did uh, obviously resonate because like years later, they're still getting tons of views. Um, and I've got videos that have gotten millions and millions of views. So, so I mean, that's that principle at play. So uh, there you go. That is by far the number one principle that has helped me grow from zero to 300,000 subscribers. And um, there you go. So a very brief recap is number one, time is going to pass whether you are doing YouTube or not. You might as well have something to show for it. Number two, punch perfection in the face. Just make videos, just hit record. Number three, one video per week. And then when you can sustain that, do two videos per week. Uh, number four, in the beginning, promote your videos on social media every single day. Number five, it doesn't matter what you want to talk about. What matters is what other people want to hear. Very important principle. Number six, uh, be aware of AdWords, you know, and, and uh, the lingo to learn what phrases people are searching for, okay, and, and kind of use that as a guide. And number, number seven, the, by far the most important, quality, okay? And if you can test the quality in real life, uh, do that, okay? If you can talk to friends and family or whoever and, you know, say like, do you like this? Do you like that? You'll get ideas from them if you tell them about something or you show them something and that tends to resonate with them. They're really interested. That tells you something. If they're not interested, that tells you something else, okay? So you can build on that real world experience to guide your decisions when making videos for your channel. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. That's probably a good overview. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. I hope that was helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments if uh, you have any suggestions for, any questions or any suggestions for what you'd like me to talk about. Um, thank you so much for listening this long. You guys are all awesome. And I will hope to see you on my next video in this series of the Business Growth and Entrepreneur Podcast. Take care.